So today we're going to make some prints on some expired Kodak polycontrast paper. This isn't made anymore. Uh, this batch that we're going to be printing today uh, has an expiration date of March 2004. So we're going to be printing with some of that. And uh, I'm also going to be using this uh, Oriental Seagull. Uh, this is widely known as uh, Ansel Adams' favorite uh, paper to print on. So uh, we're going to make some prints, so let's get into it. Okay, so before we get started printing, I'm going to show you what negatives I'm going to print here. Uh, this is uh, a roll of HP5 uh, and 120. Uh, this is my favorite image on the roll, uh, even though when I was loading it, um, peeling off the masking tape that holds it onto the backing paper, the corner tore off, still I'm going to print this because uh, I really like this image and I haven't printed it yet. This was shot on an orange, or uh, actually this was shot with a red filter, and you can see the red filter, uh, the price you pay for all this a highlight separation is the shadows and a lot of the midtones just get crushed. Uh, nonetheless, I really like this. You can see here these uh, shadows here are just just completely crushed and a lot of the detail. These satellites are all white. So just to give you an idea, like this was all white structure uh, in the shadows just gets crushed. Nonetheless, I love it. Um, we're gonna print it. Uh, and that's that one. This is a roll of XP2 Super. This is a chromogenic black and white. Um, let me see, this is upside down. And I am going to print uh, this image. This was also shot with a red filter. And you can see it really, really darkens the sky. There's a lot of open sky and uh, a storm front moving in here. Uh, so uh, this particular scene, this was like midday, about 11.30 in the, uh, in the morning, almost the afternoon, jet black couch. Uh, this was extremely bright and well lit. Uh, and so we got a lot more detail in here just because it was in, there was no, there's no shadows, there's no shade in this scene at all. So uh, this is the second image I'm gonna print uh, and we'll get into this. All right, now that we've got our negatives chosen, let's, uh, let's make some prints. Okay, all right, we're all set up, ready to go. Uh, I got the enlarger set up. I got all my paper ready. Um, I'm going to be using uh, a 6x7 uh, glass negative carrier. This has a piece of uh, anti-Newton glass on the top uh, and just a piece of regular glass on the bottom to keep it from getting Newton rings. This is essential for really sharp prints. Uh, with a condenser head because a condenser head puts out so much heat it's going to cause uh, glassless negative carriers will cause the negative to buckle and you get like this curl you probably run into it if you're scanning your negatives and you put them in the holder and after a while they if it's a real curly one you can't get them to lay flat in the first place but after you've been scanning for a while and the temperature builds up your negatives will pop and you'll get that buckle and it'll throw it you'll you'll have uh, out of focus areas and you won't know why this glass negative carrier solves all of those problems. You can use anti-Newton glass when you're scanning as well but that's what I'm going to be using. This is this is how I'm going here. Uh, Dectal developer, Dectal uh, 1 to 2 standard development, um, Ilford stop bath, odorless. I use a water bath before my fixer just to keep it clean and make it last longer. It's really, what happens I notice a lot of times is that the fixer will become exhausted first because of contamination from the stop bath, not from exhaustion due to just use and silver buildup. So uh, I always use a water bath. Even with RC prints, 
I use a lot more water baths when I'm doing fiber, but I always do a water bath before the fix. And then I do just a little water dip before I go in the washer, just to keep my wash times down to as minimal as possible and use as little, as little water as possible. So this is my setup right now. Okay, so it's the next day. Um, I was up late last night printing. So we're gonna, I got everything set back up. Uh, I'm gonna pick up where I left off, finish it up here, and then we'll go over the results. So we got all the printing done. Now we'll go over the Kodak paper. Here's the first test print from Kodak paper. You can see this is just uh, Dectol only. And you can see the fogging here is extreme. All of this around here, this is unexposed, this is completely covered. So I did 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18 seconds in two, se two second increments. This is all fog here. So uh, the way that you remedy this is you add a little benzotriazole, and benzotriazole is a, a restrainer, an anti-fogging agent. Now this is with uh, 20 milliliters per liter so 20 milliliters of benzotriazole per liter of solution of Dectol. And you can see there's, there's a significant reduction in the fog. I mean, that's, that's a lot. That's probably two stops. Uh, and then here I added, this is 30 mils per liter. And this is getting even better. And I didn't want to go any further than this. This is about as good as you're going to get because as you can see, what happens is the more, the more benzo you add, what happens is you can really see it in the highlights here. You start losing uh, highlight detail. And this, there's a certain point where it becomes uh, it loses its, its benefits. So this is about the peak from my experience. With paper like this, I would print on this and you know, you'd add a little extra rebate uh, on here and trim it down, you know, or just leave it. I mean, this is not something that you would use, you know, to print anything that you're gonna show or sell, you know. And here's a reference print. This is the uh, oriental seagull in just straight deck tall and I mean you can see what a difference is here is uh, this is my uh, test strip basically here's for comparison this is about as good as you're gonna get so you can see really any more benzo in here and you're really gonna start losing a lot of these upper mid-tones and highlights like they're really gonna start going away also uh, I have to say this is I've bought uh, plenty of this poly contrast before because it's a great paper however this box I got I got a 250 count box of this this is the worst fogging that I've ever seen on paper ever usually with the, with the benzo I'm able to 
save papers that were unwise, otherwise unusable. And th this is, I mean, the only thing that I would use this for is maybe um, contact prints, like doing contact sheets to give me an idea. Uh, because, you know, I got a, I got it relatively cheap, so, you know, it's also good for learning, but here's a, here's where you can really see what, what the fogging does. This is, uh, my final print on the poly contrast, and you can see here, there's banding, this banding here. This is not a test strip. This is a final print. You can see all these vertical bands all through the image. Now, to compare, here is the uh, Oriental. And I mean, this is an otherwise beautiful print. Um, you know, we've got dust spots in here just from, um, from carelessness. Uh, and however, the print itself, the paper is, is excellent. Really, when you compare the like the blacks here, they really compare quite nicely. You know, it produces a, a rich blacks, really, really nice. I mean, there's a bit of a cream color on the paper. I don't know how it comes out uh, on camera, but. The Oriental is like stark white. It's like pure white. And whereas the Kodak is a bit of a cream color to it, you can see here. Uh, and that definitely affects your um, the entire tonal range. You can see the whites here in the Oriental are more of a like sprite, stark white. And these, you can see the creamy, like the cream of the paper coming through in these. However, all of it is just uh, is overtaken just by the banding in here that is just you're not gonna be able to get rid of. But it still has its uses, so still happy with the way this turned out. It came out quite nice. In uh, the next print, here is uh, here's again. This is my um, test sheet, my test print. These are again in two cent, two uh, second increments, and you know you have like this m modeling or uh, you know uh, see this the tones in here. When you compare this to the uh, seagull print, you know it's just you know no comparison. And for final prints, I printed these full and square. Uh, again, you can see here, you have this vertical banding, um, you know, this is, this is, uh, what you get when you're, you know, taking the risk with expired paper, just like, it's a bit different than film. Uh, and then this is on the Oriental, which turned out wonderful, uh, in spite the, the torn film. Very nice. So. That's kind of a side by side here. So to wrap this up, you know, the real question is, is it worth it? Is it worth it to spend the money on this? And I would say after buying all of this, I have even more of what I than what I have here. This is a 250 count box. I have five boxes of uh, 100 sheet five by sevens. This is a an 8x10, an empty box of 8x10, uh, 100 count, not to mention the half a dozen other boxes that I bought that have been thrown away that I've been through. And it's, I like it. It was a good learning experience buying this paper because I got it so cheap. Now, if I were to pay uh, any more than, say, 40% of whatever retail is, for comparable paper because this isn't made anymore I would just buy new paper one because this doesn't help buying used paper doesn't help the film industry it doesn't help Ilford it doesn't help Adox it doesn't help Oriental like it doesn't help buying this stuff does not help the film industry in the same way that buying expired film doesn't help film at all 
However, if you can get it for the right price and you understand how to deal with it, you know, these images that I made from this particular paper are not, they're not usable at all. They're, they're mottled, they're muddy, they have banding. Now, having said that, this is the worst paper that I've ever bought that's expired. This paper that was in this box was, I put about 25 milliliters per liter uh, of benzotriazole and it came out fine, it came out great. The same way with the 5 by 7 I've still got almost 400 sheets of that left, which I use on a regular basis to print out working prints because uh, I've been able, these were all batched, I bought these from the same seller, so they're all aged about the same way and they all act about the same way, so they're predictable to deal with. I would not recommend it if you're just getting into doing printing because Believe it or not, it actually takes a lot more skill to be able to print with something like this because it's inconsistent. And if you're not sure how you, uh, what it takes to make a good print, then this paper is gonna drive you crazy. You know, because it's inconsistent. It's consistently inconsistent. You get this paper, you, you're printing, you're printing, you're printing, and you're getting these good prints, and all of a sudden, like, you get a couple sheets that are just terrible. And they, they, they don't react the same way to the light and then you change because you're trying to deal with the way this new paper is reacting, this different sheet of paper from the same pack and it just throws you for a loop and if you don't know how to deal with that stuff, if you just don't have the experience then it's problematic. It's, it can be a real pain in the ass. I would say if you, uh, if you have experience and you want to make contact prints for cheap, you don't want to spend, you know, 50 cents or a dollar per page just to make contact prints for, for your negatives, just to have in a binder so you can use as a reference, then use this. But I mean, I didn't pay for this 25 count or 250 sheet box. I think I paid $25 and it was $10 to ship it. So you know, it's like, uh, what's that, like maybe 10 cents or 12 cents a sheet, which, you know, for for contact sheets, then, uh, you know, I'll use that. I can make a lot of contact sheets with that, and it's useful. However, if I were just getting started in the game and I wasn't as experienced and I didn't know how to deal with this stuff, that would drive me crazy. Uh, so... The benzo triazole is from photogra photographer's photographer's formulary, which is a mainstay in the photography, uh, the analog photography world. They sell everything from wet plate collodion chemicals to uh, metal to uh, hydroquinone to everything that you need to mix your own chemicals. Photographer's Formulary is where you can get that stuff. I got this from B&H. B&H does stock a lot of Photographer's Formulary stuff. And this 10 grams uh, mixed up, I, I think, 500 milliliters, which is a lot. I've had it for several months uh, in a brown glass jar. And whenever I need it, I pull some out. You know, 500 milliliters using it 20 or 30 milliliters per liter at a time goes a long way. You can get a lot done with this. And it opens up a whole nother world. You know, I've got a bunch of uh, Ilford Warm Tone paper that, uh, you know, that stuff just historically doesn't, Warm Tone paper just doesn't sell that well. And uh, one of my local camera shops had a bunch of it that I got for a great price uh, because it's expired and it's fogged, but it's usable when I put a little of the benzo in the, in the developer. So, you know, uh, understand what it is when you're getting into it. It's not like uh, shooting expired film at all. You know, you're not gonna put these on Instagram and get a bunch of likes. Like this is, it's it's not a cool like look. You know, it's not an artistic look. It's not a unique look. It's basically it's shit. So, uh, however, it's not all bad. You know, it's usable. Uh, this is RC paper, which is a lot different than fiber paper. RC papers have developers incorporated into the um, emulsion, which is the reason why RC papers fog like this. Uh, if you can find expired fiber paper, you're going to have a lot better results because traditionally fiber paper is, is not 
uh, doesn't have the same emulsion. It's, it doesn't have, uh, it's not meant for speedy processing. The whole point with these was to make them as fast, make it as fast as possible because before RC papers it was just fiber and fiber paper is a, a real time consuming, labor intensive way to print. And these types of papers came out to make it easier for everybody and faster. So, you know, this is like, a lot of these came out in the prime of like the dark room boom from like the, you know, from the uh, 60s and 70s and even into the 80s before like the photo labs really became like exploding on the scene. Uh, the whole point was to be as quick, as fast as possible to cut your development times from three minutes to one minute and then your fixing and your washing times down to just, you know, with rapid fixer 30 seconds and then wash it for two, three minutes and you're done. So you can go from, uh, from enlarger to wash to dry it in 20 or 30 minutes. However, in time, those incorporated developers turn into fog and that is what you're dealing with. So overall, I like it, I can use it. I wouldn't recommend it to a beginner. If you've got a bit of experience and you can come across some expired uh, paper at a good price don't pay don't even pay if you have to pay even half of what retail is then just let it then you know forget about it if you can get it for less than 50% of retail because uh, you're not gonna be able to do it without using some kind of restrainer there are others out there but benzo triazole is by far the best um, and it's the most easily available you can get this stuff this I think this was eight or ten dollars from B&H and you know I never buy any spend any less than fifty dollars anyway so you get free shipping there uh, which makes it usable uh, you know if you know how to deal with it you can get some cool results this is like a worst case scenario here uh, on this so you know I'm glad I did this episode like this but it's you know it's not without its faults so thanks for watching you know or that or whatever later